tight glycemic control for diabetes mellitus patient, can potentially reduce the long-term complications such as neuropathy, retinopathy, nephropathy, microangiopathy, and cardiovascular disease. That's why, it's very important to understand about glycated hemoglobin and its pathogenesis in diabetes mellitus. Hemoglobin A1c is a marker that used to determine the three-month average blood sugar level. And it also helpful to determine of the glycemic control over the lifespan of a red cell, within 120 days. It also used widely for diagnostic test in diabetes mellitus and assessment for glycemic control in the diabetic patient. Glycated hemoglobin, HbA1c, is a form of hemoglobin that is non-enzymatically linked to monosaccharides molecule, such as, glucose, galactose, and fructose. The term of glycation, refer to the normal process that involves in the reversible attachment of glucose to proteins, lipids, and nucleic acid without the action of any enzymes. The higher amount of glycated hemoglobin, indicates the excessive sugar level within the bloodstream during past three months. However, optimal glucose level produces a normal amount of glycated hemoglobin in healthy individuals. Pathogenesis of glycation Ship bases is the initial products of glycated hemoglobin, followed by condensation reaction that occurs between glucose and the beta chain of hemoglobin. It is reversible and can dissociate rapidly. With recurrent or persistent hyperglycemia, glucose attachments becomes irreversible, and not only bound to hemoglobin of the red cells, but also collagen or extracellular protein of the interstitial tissue which is called advanced glycation end products, ages. Ages can bind to its specific receptor known as RAGE, which expresses on inflammatory cells, endothelial cells, and vascular smooth muscle cells, that would bring many following consequences, include releases of pro-inflammatory cytokines and growth factors from intimal macrophages, which elevate inflammation reaction, production of reactive oxygen species from endothelial cells, leading to oxidative stress and induce LDL oxidation, activate pro-coagulant properties by endothelial cells, which promote platelet adhesion and reduced fibrinolysis increases proliferation of vascular smooth muscle cells, in other to maintain extracellular matrix. In addition, ages could have direct effect, like cross-linked to the proteins, like albumin, immunoglobulin, low-density lipoprotein, or collagen at the basement membrane, that would decrease in proteolytic digestion by enzyme activities. It results with less protein removal, and increased deposition of protein. Glycated collagen along with trapped elements, causing basement membrane to be thickening. If ages cross link with collagen type 1 in the large vessels, it results decreases in elasticity and predispose them to tear, leaving with endothelial injury. If it cross links with collagen type 4 in the basement membrane of endothelium, it would be leading to decreases endothelial cell adhesion, and increases fluid extravasation. Abnormal thickening of the basement membrane, causing of LDL molecule to be trapped between the intimal layer of the vessel wall. Then soon after oxidized by free radical that accelerating atherogenesis. Indication and uses. Glycated hemoglobin measurement is not appropriate, where a change in diet or treatment has been made within six weeks. People with recent blood loss, hemolytic anemia, or genetic differences in the hemoglobin molecule, hemoglobinopathy, like sickle cell disease, and other conditions as well as those who have donated blood recently, are not suitable for this test. In the other hand, concentrations of hemoglobin A1c are elevated, in both diabetic patients and the patients with kidney failure. Glycated hemoglobin testing to detect the level of hemoglobin A1c by the blood sample, is recommended for both checking the blood sugar control in people who might be pre-diabetic, and in the people who already had diabetes. The glycated hemoglobin test should be performed at least twice a year in diabetes mellitus patients. And the patient who has a good glycemic control, should have HbA1c level less than 7% or close to normal range. That's it for the topic. If you find this video useful, 
please give us a like and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching.